Hello everyone, welcome to video three on looking at different ways of collecting data. This is Mrs. Rawson. I am going to be talking to you guys about these four different methods of collecting data. So first, from the two videos that you guys have already done, we've already looked at understanding the different ways to look at data. So now we're just going to look at how we can use different methods to collect the data. And then just notice in the future, we'll also look at how we can actually sample a population. So you can see the four different ways that we're going to talk about here. So we have observation, experiment, survey, and simulation. And the nice thing is the words themselves can be easy ways to help remind you of the differences in them, but we will also discuss them and their strengths and weaknesses. So first, like you guys can see with the word observe, it means that the researcher is literally watching the subject of interest in different ways where they're trying to not have any effect on the environment. Based on those observations, the researcher will then draw conclusions. As we look at the strengths, definitely easy to do and it does not require much money. But as you can see, it can also expose complicated relationships. So it can lead into further investigations. So think about with the weaknesses, you may observe something and kind of take your own opinion on it. So as you can see, it shows relationships, but not necessarily cause and effect, which we will talk about in these next couple examples. And again, as you can see here, um, it can show relationships, but it could totally be by chance, could not have anything to do with their actual cause and effect. So we have some kind of random strange examples for you guys to see here. So first, um, we've got average temperature and number of pirates. So we are trying to just show you guys completely random things so that you can see they may have a strong correlation, but not necessarily that causation um, relationship. And then also you can see Internet Explorer and the murder rate. So again, looking at they do look like they are related as time goes by. They are decreasing, but um, we're just observing those differences or those similarities. Again, another totally random one here. As you guys can see, relatively close in a relationship, definitely not showing a relationship with causation. Just one more example here. Strong correlation, but they may not be causing an effect. All right, so with an experiment, you guys have probably talked about this a lot in science classes as well, but here it definitely helps when we are looking for a cause and effect relationship. So as you can see, um, we might be trying to test out a treatment, like a new drug, paying attention in class or to this video. Um, just anything that we can try to control. And we want, as you guys can see, a specific, we want to see if a specific treatment can bring about a result or effect. All right, so as we're looking at our sample, as you can see, we have two different groups. So the experimental group will receive the actual treatment and then the control group will not. This all should be pretty familiar to you just from other courses you've probably taken. Remember that placebo effect that you've probably heard about before? That's where the control group may be thinking that something is happening to them if, they're not sh if they don't know that they are not actually receiving the treatment, but they think they are. So they may be convinced that they have also seen the effect of it. So as we look at those strengths and weaknesses, we can see that it is 
difficult to contradict if it's done well. So that's a good strength because the results are strong. So as we go through, like we've looked at also, we want to find that cause and effect relationship that if you're just observing, it's difficult to find that. Very common in medicine and social sciences. But it is difficult to design it correctly to make it completely accurate. And you must consider all these different variables that are in play and it can cost a lot of money to make it good. All right, so a survey, you guys have answered surveys all the time. We get those Viking views survey questions as just one example. Um, so as you know, it's just a list of questions. You basically just ask a bunch of people those questions. A lot of times it's just through the internet or on the phone. You can go out in your community, not right now though, but during the normal time to ask survey questions. So with those strengths, it is obviously pretty inexpensive and easy to do. Definitely helpful if you're just looking for opinions or attitudes from people. <clears throat> so it's definitely not good for reality though. It's definitely just more of the perceptions from people, but it also can have low response rates. So it may not be completely an accurate description from what you're trying to find. Also notice how the order of the questions does make a difference. We will talk about that as we continue through these topics. All right, and lastly, simulations. That's when we're trying to model a situation. Mostly that will happen in a computer program. And from that data, we get the results from the simulation. We'll run that hundreds or thousands of times to compare the results to see how accurate we can get it to be. Those can be pretty inexpensive as well, and they can get you a lot of information, especially helpful when you're hand handling complicated systems or that are just unethical or impractical to perform in real life. Needs to be a good model though, so that would be especially the computer program needs to have the strength in that. And depending on the system, they could require more computing power that we have that actually exists. So this would just be an example of one. So let's say we're trying to figure out um, the probability of getting a Yahtzee. So it's difficult to figure out because the player gets three rolls and can save some dice. So you can write a program that plays 1 million Yahtzee games. There's that simulation of that really, really high number to get the most accurate data. So then the computer player always retains the dice, and then you just record the number of Yahtzees. This can just show you a visual of what the computer program would look like in doing that. And then notice here, just based on that specific program that did that simulation, it's a percentage of just over 4%. That covers the four different types of ways of collecting data, and that should help you guys be able to answer the questions that you will have on this assignment.